Okay. We are ready, Master. Okay, very good. Hello, everyone. This is the third installment of uh, the discussion uh, about Master Linji's uh, teaching uh, that the Koreans uh, 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 practice. Um, before we go into that, there is an outstanding question from yesterday from YouTube. Go ahead, YouTube. Uh, pure land cultivation circles proclaim those who commit the five rebellious offenses cannot go to the pure land. Is this true? Okay. Very good. I remember when I first started uh, uh, becoming a left home person uh, as a novice, uh, I, uh, my interest was to learn uh, to become a fully ordained monk and then go learn precepts because I realized my master's temples, uh, they, don't, they don't quite understand precepts, at least on the men's side. So my, 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 uh, my point was, uh, my aim was to uh, go there and learn precepts. It didn't happen until like uh, four, maybe three and a half years later now, it's, that's when I had a chance to go to Taiwan, to a very famous precept school in Taiwan at the time. There's two of them only. Uh, one, that one is the most famous one, and the other one is more like a college or university environment. So, uh, so I, I chose to go to that one that is a temple that uh, where the monks uh, practiced and researched and studied the precepts, the Vinaya, hmm. was founded by a monk who uh, passed away already. Uh, he, uh, later I found out he's a second stage Ahat. Hmm. So when I got there, uh, they're quite, a, they're quite a popular. Uh, they uh, very doing very well. Lots of people go there, many monks go there because the Taiwanese uh, understand that nowadays uh, you, you need to learn the fundamentals if you want to practice Buddhism. So precepts is one of the first few things you learn. So many Taiwanese monks rotate in and out uh, through that temple. So I was there. And I remember uh, there is, uh, they had a, uh, an ordination. They were preparing for ordination, full ordination for some monks. And one of the uh, trainees there. They train both fully ordained as well as novice monks. Okay, And so uh, one of the uh, novices there, uh, the night before he was uh, about to go to another branch, temp another temple in Taiwan to receive full ordination. Okay. He came and approached the manager of the temple uh, at the time. Uh, he's been uh, uh, there like 15 years and learned from, uh, uh, learned from the original founder as well. Uh, and so he asked him uh, for during this, uh, this ceremony, pre, uh, uh, um, uh, this ceremony uh, for full ordination, uh, there is a section where they ask you, uh, they ask us, have you violated the five precepts? We're not even talking about the five rebellious acts. We're talking about the, the five precepts, which are much less severe than five re rebellious acts. So far, so good. So he asked him, I violated the, uh, one of uh, the uh, unrepentable five, five uh, precepts uh, uh, because no one ever taught me. And then I go here and I, and I learn from you and I realize that 
is not repentable. So, can I still receive full precepts? And what was the answer? The manager said, I'm so sorry, we can't. We can't help you. There's no way that for you to receive full ordination because you violated the five precepts. So that Taiwanese uh, novice, next day, he went home brokenhearted. And he uh, gave up and returned to lay life. Okay. I knew about that and I felt very bad because even though I didn't know much about precepts, but at the time I knew that uh, my master, my Chinese master, Master Xuanhua's temple, uh, they have a process where uh, before you receive full ordination, uh, when I received my novice precepts, um, I was not qualified to receive full precepts yet because I only had 10 months. Uh, even though I sat longer and meditated better than almost all the monks who were, actually all the monks who were receiving full ordination, uh, they're nowhere near my, my meditation skills levels. But I was, uh, I was forced, I was only allowed to receive a, a, a novice precept, not full ordination. Mm. And, uh, and so I noticed that uh, uh, they, are, they have a system where the ordained monks would sit there and interview you, and, and, then, uh, and then they ask about your offenses you created in the past and so forth. And I realized when they did that, uh, they have a way that was taught, I'm pretty sure, by Master Xinhua, on how to help people like us who violated precepts. So my point was that when I, so I knew back then, uh, uh, years ago, when I uh, uh, was ordained, uh, I was uh, received uh, my my novice precepts. I knew that the my master's temple has a Mahayana Dharma door, uh, Mahayana method to restore your to make you whole again after if you have such violations with the five precepts. All right. Uh, so that's why when I was at that uh, Taiwanese temple, precepts temple, I was a little bit disappointed. I knew that it was basically Hinayana, uh, where they stick to the books, and of course the Vinaya uh, is, uh, is, uh, is a basis, but the Vinaya does not have all the Dharma doors of Mahayana. Vinaya uh, of Hinayana and Mahayana are of the same uh, texts. However, uh, in Mahayana, there's a lot more that uh, more uh, dharmas that are not mentioned in the Vinaya. Case in point, if you look at the Vimala Kirti Sutra, there's a section where Upali, uh, in a chapter where Upali, who is the foremost in precepts, observing precepts. He's an authority on Vinaya in Buddhism, Hinayana Buddhism, if you will, who was asked a question by two monks who violated the precepts, and basically the, the uh, uh, Upali is the expert in uh, Hinayana precepts and Buddhist precepts, basically told them they have to return to lay life. Uh, and so these two monks went to see Vimala Kirti, who, who is the transformation body of a Buddha, who said, no, Upali doesn't know what he's talking about. You guys are okay. okay? So my point is that if you learn precepts from the Hinayana people, then uh, there's no way to uh, restore, to, to recover from uh, these pre uh, certain types of precept violations because it's not written in their scriptures, in the scriptures. Just like Chan, a lot of Chan teachings are not written in scriptures. Right? 
And the Buddha never taught about those Chan doctrines or many pure land doctrines that are not written in the scriptures. So, uh, so that's why uh, if so this is not uncommon for me later when I came back here to hear my own uh, uh, the own the uh, uh, the, uh, the low level monks from uh, my master temple proclaiming that if you violate the five precepts you cannot attain rebirth to the pure land, let alone the five rebellious acts. All right. Uh, so uh, I would tell you. The answer was the same as I said last night. Yes, they can enter, the, they can go to the Pure Land for two reasons. Number one, Mahayana has a method to restore your purity after you violate precepts. Only in Mahayana that we know about those are only taught to those who are enlightened. So that's, I, I, I imagine that's what happened uh, from, uh, at, that, uh, at my master's temple, to make sure that the people who receive ordination from them uh, are attaining the piece of substance properly. So they had to receive help from the masters and his disciples. All right, so that's so. So that's why uh, it's possible because uh, uh, not only uh, because only enlightened people can do that. All right, and um, and it's uh, written in uh, the teachings of some sutras that I don't care to go into because I'm not here to uh, uh, to uh, prove anything. You believe or you don't believe is your problem. None of my business. But from my perspective, the peop such people who say that they are, they are, they are, the um, recovery from the uh, uh, violation of precepts is not feasible because it says unrepentable in the Vinaya uh, is uh, from a Hinayana perspective, Hinayana level. They aren't taught, they, they aren't taught yet. Uh, the, the recovery method of Mahayana because they're not qualified yet to execute the Mahayana uh, method of recovery. So what's the point in teaching you, for example, uh, uh, geometry when you are basically uh, are at the level of kindergarten? Okay, so that's why, that's why these people don't know. And so you can tell right away for, for Pure Land practitioners, if such people make uh, such claims, for example, my master's uh, monks who made a claim that uh, the five precept violator cannot go to the pure land, uh, that monk in particular, I know, uh, Vietnamese monk, basically his, his level is too low to be able to understand or to be able to be let in on Master Xinhua's teaching on how to recover from the five precepts violation. Okay. Uh, and uh, along the same point, I'm only giving an example of the five precepts violation. Uh, it's the same methodology you can use to restore any type of precept violation, including the five rebellious acts. All right? So, so that's, that's, uh, that's possible to recover uh, from that. And, uh, and uh, number two, Point number two is that uh, I know of such people who uh, violated the five precepts and, uh, and, uh, 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 and uh, they made it to the pure land. So we speak from empirical evidence, not just uh, nonsense from these people who uh, only read from books. And uh, so they, they stick to the Hinayana uh, understanding, not actual uh, Mahayana scope of the Buddhist teaching and empirical evidence. Okay, uh, because I know uh, of some people who, uh, who uh, killed the mother and killed the father who made it to the pure land as well. How's that? So those are facts from us. All right, but it's up to you. We're not here to 
uh, to, uh, you can believe whatever you wish to believe. You will believe that uh, you, uh, you commit uh, violations, and then, then you can't make it to the Pure Land. So be it. It's your life. No one is forcing you. Okay? Uh, it's a question still. <laughs> And this is very serious business. That's why the Pure Land Dharma door is a Mahayana Dharma door. And unfortunately, the teachers out there are Hinayana level. That's why they don't understand the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the full scope of the Pure Land uh, Dharma door in Mahayana. Yes, Pink. Yes, I think it's a kind of a similar question. The, if we can make a go to the Pure Land, this means that are we, uh, are we free of the karmic uh, retribution? All right. Uh, I... For such people, in particular, uh, this is uh, written in the uh, Pure Land uh, scriptures, uh, but uh, by these uh, Pure Land teachers out there don't quite understand it yet. Uh, the if you violate the precepts, in particular the unrepentable sections of the precepts, uh, and for example the five rebellious acts, okay, you can still go to the pure land. However, you go to the pure land prison, if you will. I call it prison because you go to one Yin palace. You don't get to see Amitabha Buddha. You get to see only one Yin Bodhisattva. You'll be there for a long, long time, study under one Yin Bodhisattva until the Bodhisattva deems that you are worthy to see Amitabha Buddha. Does it make sense to you? No one gets to see Amitabha Buddha unless he's qualified. Okay? So, uh, so that's, uh, that's the, the process that actually happens to these, uh, these people. Or these, for example, demons. Are a lot, they commit a lot, a lot worse offenses than, uh, than the five rebellious acts. And they got to go to the pure land as well. And that's the nature of Amitabha's power. He can accommodate anyone, okay, uh, if they know how to do it. And they follow the same parameters, okay. Uh, so, for example, case in point. Let's say that you, uh, you committed the five rebellious acts. And never mind about the process I told you, uh, okay? But I can quote you vow 18, where everyone knows. They said, if you recite my names 10 times without, you know, uh, before you die and the time of death, I come and, gre- and bring you back, okay? Uh, if you manage to do that, even though you broke the, the, the worst precepts, even though you're a demon, you recite Buddha's name 10 times, if you can do that just before you die, the Buddha will come, for sure. And that's the vow, you see? So it has nothing to do with whether you, uh, are, you broke a, uh, or didn't break precepts. It's about you are able to recite the Buddha's name that way. Now, it turns out that if you continually break precepts, habitually break precepts, at the point of that time of death, it's very difficult for you to recite the Buddha's name because your karmic obstruction will come and stop you from reciting. That's just life, okay? Because once you go to the Pure Land, these creditors of yours, the people you did wrong to, the people you harm, you kill, you slander, okay? They will come and stop you from going because when you go to the Pure Land, uh, you, they can no longer access you. It's too far from, from here. So that's why they, in Pure Land Buddhism, they call it, you bring your karma to the Pure Land, meaning whatever you owe them, you basically s- skip town on them. You run away and you go over, go over to a place where these creditors of yours can no longer have access to you unless you go back to the area. So is there your, your karmic retributions, you will, become suspended, right? Until you come back. So the proof is in the story of the Buddha. The Buddha used to kill Devadara. Okay? 
So when he became a Buddha, he came back to the Sao world as Shakyamuni Buddha, and then that's how Devadara uh, can now inflict harm upon the Buddha, right? But until then, until you are within range, there's nothing they can do. Does it make sense? Because that's, that's the beauty of the practice in Mahayana that Hinayana people don't seem to understand yet. Okay? It's not clearly spelled out in Buddhism. Okay? You take the story of the, the, the Dharma door, the pillar in Buddhism, you see that even though you are a very horrible person, you have a lot of obstructions, if you manage to go to the Pure Land, the Buddha, Amitabha Buddha will shield you from those temporarily so that you can become a Buddha. And after which you will be much better disposed, much better able to, to address those karmic debts. Does it make sense? Over here, if you cultivate you know, your creditors, you practice here, your creditors, they have access to you. They knock on your doors, they slam to your cars, and you park on the streets, and they burn down your houses, they harass your family, okay? Because they have access. But when you go to the Pure Land, they cannot have access to you until you come back. Does it help? All right. Still have a question on YouTube. We have a question from Tian Gao. Uh, can the great compassion repentance help one to regain purity from violating all kinds of precepts? That's true. There are many mechanisms that, uh, that you can do that, but it's also misleading. Let's say you violate the, 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 uh, the five rebellious acts, which will bring you uh, to the unintermittent health after you die, okay? Now, uh, for, for such heavy offenses, if you were to try to repent by yourself, uh, it's very unlikely to be successful. Even though you can recite mantra, you can repent and so forth, okay? It's probably it's not going to work for you. In those cases, usually, you're much better off uh, uh, much better off uh, getting help, all right, from someone, like I told you, uh, the trick that uh, if my master's temples, they have a full ordination, I tell you, if they accept you and help uh, in, their, in the process, you are, uh, you are uh, uh, incredibly blessed because they're very picky, okay? Uh, so, uh, yes, there are repentances, there are, there are Mahayana repentances where you can purify yourself, regain purity, but it's not as simple as you think, okay? It may not work right away, but for those people who are trained to do these things, they work. They go into the repentance and work just like that, okay? That's part of the process as well. Uh, I remember, for example, uh, uh, years ago, about 10 years ago, uh, a young Vietnamese, uh, uh, probably in the 30s, uh, emailed me from Chicago, from Illinois, from Chicago. Uh, and he says, Master, I broke the five precepts, the same precepts that, that uh, novice broke. Okay? And I went all around, and no one could help me. No Vietnam monk, Vietnamese monk could help me. No one. As a matter of fact, no Korean monk can help him either, as far as I know. Uh, uh, so, can you help? And then he says, I do anything, whatever it costs, whatever I need to do, I do it. And that's the mistake he made. <laughs> and my answer is, yes, I can help you. Okay? Here's what you do. First thing, since you're willing, I didn't explain this, since he said he's willing to do anything, whatever it costs, okay, dangle money in front of me. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> if you're sincere, you wouldn't want to do that. So I said, I tell you what, don't worry about money yet. 
okay? All I want you to do is bow 10,000 times in repentance. Okay? And uh, uh, so he says, yes, I tried. Uh, I said, how long do you think it's going to take you? He says, I think probably two, three months at the most. And uh, then he disappeared. <laughs> Never contacted me again. You test me, uh, the test comes right back at you. <laughs> so that's what happened. Uh, is still a question from YouTube? A question from Duyen Tri. Uh, the prince that killed his father king in the larger Amitya Sutra, he later got to the Pure Land too, correct? Who? Who is that? Uh, the prince, the prince that killed his father king in the Amitya Sutra. Uh, uh, Vida, he is a wife and uh, and uh, so forth. Uh, uh, hey, old monk. Does, uh, does the, the, the guy, the killer of the, of the father come to go to the pure land or not? The killing the father is, is a, a, one of the five rebellious acts. Uh, not just that person, if he gets help from, from the proper, the proper uh, Dharma master, again, I may remind you, no lay person can help you in the pure land Dharma door. No lay person is qualified to teach or execute the Dharma door from my, as far as I know. Even 90% of the monks cannot do it. I'm being very generous in quoting a, a very low number, 90% of the monks, okay? Anyway, so uh, I, don't, I don't remember the details of, of the of large Amitabha Sutra, but uh, right now, but uh, it's no big, not a big deal. Uh, again, um, from my perspective, it's possible, and uh, uh, whether you believe it or not is not that important to me. Okay? Yeah. Is that, is that, is that King, uh, is that King uh, um, uh, make it to the, did he make it to the pure land? Bimbisara is the king. The wife is Videhi. Bimbisara uh, has a son who is Ashnatha uh, uh, Sutra. Okay? Uh, and uh, when uh, Videhi was, uh, was uh, the wife was pregnant with that prince, uh, uh, she had uh, cravings. Okay? Like, most of, like many pregnant women uh, do. And what kind of craving does she have? She, uh, we, she wanted blood from the king. You remember that, that anecdote? So the king, uh, uh, being in love with his wife, would cut himself and then uh, get blood for his wife to appease her, her cravings. So. Uh, so the sages back then uh, made a prediction. He says, this son here is after the Buddha's blood, I mean, uh, the father's blood. He will end up killing his father. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, so, that, uh, so uh, sure enough, later he, uh, he starved the, uh, the uh, Bimbisara king to death okay, in a dungeon. Uh, and... Uh, almost uh, uh, withdrew uh, a, a, um, a sword, sword to kill his mother for meddling with that, for him his, uh, trying to kill the father. Uh, so, uh, so that's why uh, the uh, Vidhi, uh, that's why the, uh, the origin of the large Amitabha Sutra, I remember now, is because she was uh, also uh, uh, being uh, imprisoned in a dungeon and being starved to death as well. Um, 
And so she called on the Buddha. They both are big supporters, big believers of the of Shakyamuni Buddha. And so Vidhi uh, cried and lamented and uh, uh, towards the Buddha uh, from a distance and said, "We're honored one. You know, life is so meaningless. My own son, my our beloved son, is uh, committing patricide and matricide, killing his father, and now it's a process of killing me, his mother." So this life is meaningless. So that's why and the Buddha sent, I believe, uh, Mahamagalyana over to speak the large Amitabha Sutra, the Vidhi. And the Vidhi heard it. She's very happy. And she later passed happily, peacefully, uh, believing in, in the Pure Land. So not sure what happened to Bimbisara. It's not clear in the Sutra, I remember. But what happened, the question is, what happened to Ashna, Ashna, Ashnata Sutta, whatever is this, the king's name? What? And uh, 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 he turned out to be a very bloody king. Uh, he killed a lot of people. And, uh, and uh, he believed in, in uh, Devadatta, uh, even followed uh, Devadatta who said, I will help you become, uh, win your battles, become the emperor of India. Uh, and uh, if you help me kill the Buddha so that I become the next Buddha, you become the next uh, Indian emperor, okay? the most powerful emperor. So that's the alliance. Uh, and later, uh, later uh, that uh, em emperor, that king, Ashanta, Ashanta, whatever, he uh, was converted to Mahayana and, and repented and took refuge with the Buddha. Uh, and later, uh, he actually, because uh, I read this in English years ago, uh, because I couldn't understand Mahayana uh, uh, books in English. And, uh, and so uh, later, I, I believe uh, the, that king, that king was, uh, was, uh, uh, was uh, certified to the fruition. I'm not sure it's fourth, but, uh, but he certified to the fruition. So my answer is that I don't know he made it the pure land, but I, my, my answer, my, what I know is that he didn't fall. Okay? Comment, you two, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Duyan Tri says that the story is from the Sutra of Contemplation on Buddha Amitayas. And the prince's name is Ajatasatru. Ajatasatru, yeah. Okay, Shatru, yeah. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, right. The Contemplation Sutra. Thank you. All right. So I don't know if, uh, the fa if that prince made it to the Pure Land. Uh, uh, for a person like him to make it to the Pure Land, he probably would need help. Okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, he's not, he didn't make it to be a four-stage ahat. Lower levels, including four-stage ahats, uh, if they want to go to the Pure Land, they need help. They can't go as they please. All right. Are we clear on that? Okay. So ignore. My question is, from my perspective, ignore those Hinayana Pure Land teachers. They don't know what they're talking about, including my master's uh, uh, monks, who are lower level, I know what, the, what level those monks are. And uh, some of the uh, Pure Land teachers right now, what I would classify as Hinayana Pure Land, because the level is not uh, Mahayana uh, Samadhi yet. That's why they don't quite understand the full extent of this Pure Land Dharma door. Dharma, the Pure Land Dharma door is very advanced Mahayana teachings. Don't be fooled by the lack of uh, materials, okay? Uh. All right, uh, where are we? Are we okay now? Okay, let's see if we can try to uh, go back to this teaching here, uh, to, to reorient you. This is Master Lin Ji's teaching. Uh, uh, be your own master anywhere and wherever you are, it will be true. That's the translation to English, which is uh, not a bad translation, because, but it cannot incorporate the, the, uh, the uh, profound uh, teachings. But this is the best we can do at this stage. And we 
for the first night, we talked about uh, 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 what did we talk about? I forgot now. You got me sidetracked for after spending half an hour talking about QLAN. So anyway, we talked about it, and Master Linji uh, last night uh, stressed the fact that uh, left home people uh, they should be. And there's a difference between left home people, true left home people, and fake left home people. The true left home people is the one that can discern Buddha versus demons, true versus false, uh, and um, and uh, uh, sagely versus uh, common versus ordinary people. Those are the true uh, left home people. What he's referring to are meaning that those sanghans. And those left home people uh, must be enlightened to be able to do so. It's very, very, very Chinese. They uh, usually talk tangentially, you know, bleak. They don't tell directly. Like, so I will interpret for you that these people are enlightened. That's why they can tell the difference. All right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, the, so basically, Master Linji raise the standards. It says, you left home people, uh, or even you lay people, there is a, a class of unenlightened and enlightened people. The enlightened people are the one that you can depend on, okay? Uh, especially if you call yourself a teacher, okay? Then you need to, uh, so Master Linji very, very uh, compassionately set the standard, because when he said that, he offended a lot of people probably lost a lot of disciples, a lot of supporters. All right? When he says, no, this is what it is. This is Chan. This is Mahayana. All right? And uh, uh, okay, and we at 17, uh, he says, if there is one Buddha uh, demon now in the same body and not separate. He's referring to the fact that uh, even the demons, again, I repeat, the demons are a lot worse, a lot more evil than the five rebellious acts, uh, the people who commit those acts. They're not as evil, to, as, as, evil as the demon, I, I assure you. Demons are far more, far more vicious, far more evil. Okay? And in, in, in Buddhism, we don't kill demons. We don't harm demons. We don't slander demons because they're bad. Okay? Uh, we, we still, these demons, as I said, can still, even those demons can still go to the Pure Land. Straight away. Okay, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, so it's because the demon also has the potential to become a Buddha. That's why Amitabha Buddha accepts them. They can be taught. They can be trained. Okay, and within this demon here, the, the, within the demon, the Buddha nature, the Buddha nature is still present not in a separate body. It's just like the Buddha nature is, is present in each and every one of you. So that's why in Mahayana, we have no harming, okay? Uh, we don't say that because you're evil, because you are a bad, bad person, you're doing evil acts, therefore it's justified in harming you, in killing you, in in the, in the, in the, in, in, in your work, okay? And that's, that's wrong. That's not Mahayana. Is that clear? Hmm. So that's why it's because when you hurt those people, those demons, you're harming the Buddha yourself. Next, 18. 
like uh, milk and water, like milk and water mix, you can drop the A. The goose king will only drink the milk. Uh, uh, meaning that if, even when you mixed, even when you mix water and milk, okay, uh, uh, the, uh, the people with wisdom can only extract the milk and drink the milk and not the water. Okay, the same thing. Uh, you, if you have the wisdom, you have Mahayana wisdom, you look at a demon, and the Buddha did that. You remember the story. The demon king, I forgot his name, uh, came to harass the Buddha. First he sent his daughters, his heavenly maidens, gorgeous, gorgeous heavenly maidens to sway the Buddha, okay? Just when the Buddha was about to become a Buddha, he got the test from the heavenly maidens and the Buddha passed the test and then the demon king was so surprised, he says, oh, it seems like from my recollection, no one ever failed this test, I've never passed this test yet, and you passed this test, that's incredible. So he had to come and look for himself. I said, so you're the Buddha, okay? And uh, so the Buddha said, yes, it's me. I'm about to become a Buddha. And then he, uh, and the demon king started asking him, you know, why, why is that my, all the things I threw at you, the tests I threw at you, none of them works. And the Buddha started uh, talking to the demon king and spoke Dharma to him. And after he spoke Dharma to the demon king, uh, he's one of the, of the um, very big demon kings in the, in the sixth desire heaven, I was wrong. That's where my late father went, not the second desire heaven. Uh, after my late father died, uh, to play with the uh, the uh, the uh, six desire heaven maidens. Uh, uh, anyway, so he he uh, uh, after listening to the Dharma from the Buddha, the demon king certified to first stage arhat. Okay. So you see, uh, if, if we kill the demon, the king, then the Buddha wouldn't have a chance to convert this demon king and help him reach first stage Arha. All right? So that's why uh, if people are bad or evil or whatever, uh, none of your business. Mind your business. Become a lion, become a Buddha. That's what you do. Whatever they do, it's none of your business. Is that clear? Trying to get the pillar on yourself. So, because the people with wisdom, like a goose king here, okay, can discern, can extract what's good out of this chaos, out of this mess. They can extract the goodness inside of the demon king's soul. Is that clear? Don't be like those idiots who decide to be judge, uh, uh, jury, and executioner. <laughs> if a bright-eyed practitioner, slide number 19, uh, uh, if there is an eye-bright practitioner, he or she would defeat both uh, uh, the demon and the Buddha. Okay? Meaning that even if the Buddha nature is inside this demon, uh, demon king here, uh, the bright eye practitioner can defeat this demon, his ploys. All right? And that's true. That's what the demons find out time and time again, discover time and time again. You cannot prevail over the such uh, bright-eyed practitioner, meaning those people with prajna wisdom. Okay? They're, they're capable of facing the challenges of uh, the demon kings, the tests the demon kings throw at you. Okay? Number 20, and those are great news. Okay? Have faith. If you don't want to believe, so be it. No one is forcing you. But for us Mahayana people, we know. We know that it's possible. 
has been done before, time and time again. Uh, you low-level people haven't met those disciples of the Buddha who's capable of doing this. That's why you listen to idiots and believe in idiots. Okay, that's your karmic obstructions. Tough luck. Uh, 20, if you love sages, loath commoners, you will bubble in uh, uh, you will bubble what? There's something missing. If you love commoners and loathe sages, something is wrong here. This doesn't make sense. Check the Chinese again, check the Chinese text again. This is incorrect. Okay? Uh, what they saying, the, what it's uh, supposed to say is that if you reject the sagely teachings, the sages, and you draw near the ordinary people, then you will definitely bobble up and down in a sea of birth and death. Yes. Orange, red, pink. Is it so? Um, I think it's trying to say that if you still uh, discriminate, you will flow in the uh, birth and death sea. So the bright eye practitioner actually don't discriminate between the Buddha and the demon. Oh, okay, that would work too. Okay, but I the buy that. regular people would discriminate. Okay, thank you. You're correct. Okay, I stand corrected. That's right. Uh, uh, but but uh, I wouldn't say it this way because it's, it's misleading. Because if you love sages and you follow sages and you are loyal to sages and you are devoted to sages. You think the sages will let you suffer? So that's why, that's my problem with this, uh, this statement. If you interpret from your way, I can buy that. However, it's not that accurate, okay? Maybe Linji, Master Linji has, has a check for me whether it's a typo, and if it's not a typo, then I would disagree with this, okay? It's not true. There's a lot of reason why it's not true, but that, you know, that, that's, uh, that's uh, where uh, it, it shows level, the level of Master Linji's understanding. Okay, next. Okay, so, uh, and uh, uh, finally, we have two more slides. Uh, oh, yeah, YouTube has a question. It's getting to be a lot more time on, on the question. I'm trying to finish this here. Yes, YouTube, go ahead. A question from Tango. Uh, Master, what about in the case of killing one to save 500 lives? What would you do? You would be violating precept either way, right? Killing what? Killing, killing one to save 500 lives. Killing one life, so 500 lives? I mean, killing one no. to 500 people? Is that no, what killing the one is? life huh? to save... Killing one person to save 500 other people. Ah, okay. It, it uh, depends if you have received the five precepts, then, then uh, it's a violation, a repentable violation. It's, you still can, can be saved. Uh, uh, if uh, you one of those 500 people it happened to be a sage, an arhat, or, or a bodhisattva, uh, yes, then you're committing the five rebellious acts. Again, you can still be saved if it's done properly. So, answer is yes, it's possible. Okay, and finally, it was, was uh, brought to my attention the origin of this expression, wherever you are, it will be true. OK, 
Okay? Uh, and that came from the Vimalakirti Sutra, uh, where uh, oh, prasnya, this is, uh, no, 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 Vimalakirti, no, no, prasnya, not prajinya. Okay. Uh, Paramita Sutra. In that sutra, uh, it says, uh, how marvelous the world honored one, not the world honored one, world honored one. I'm sorry, okay, please bear with me. Uh, translation is an iterative process. We keep on refining it over and over again because we, we miss uh, here and there. Um, how marvelous, world honored one, the boundary of un unmoving trueness is where all dharma is established. Okay? Uh, so that's from the Trashyam Paramita Sutra. And next one is, when not apart from trueness while establishing, that which is established is true. Okay? So that's where, that's where the expression is, li chu qi chen, okay? is actually from that uh, Prasnya Paramita Sutra. Now, notice, if you understand Chinese, the, uh, there's a small difference here in the original text in the Prasnya Paramita Sutra, which is a sutra for enlightened people, okay? To teach people how to become enlightened in the Prasnya teaching, uh, 20, 22 years of teaching from Shakyamuni Buddha. That's how important it is. Uh, so the, in the Prasnya Paramita Sutra, it says Ji, okay? And Master, Master uh, Lin Ji uses a different character. He uses, go back to the original uh, slide number one, he uses Jie, uh, okay? Jie is all, Ji is itself or immediately. So if you understand Chinese uh, a little bit, I understand a little bit. Uh, so uh, it shows that the original teaching is Ji is very, very powerful, very all-encompassing. Whereas Master Lin Ji, I hope uh, it's not a typo. If it's, a ty if it's not a typo, I hope it's a typo, I mean. If it's not a typo, it shows a Master Lin Ji, uh, he should not have substituted Jie uh, uh, for Ji. That's incorrect. Jie is not the same as Ji, even though you translate as the same thing, but Ji is instantaneously, it's no distinction. Jie still have distinction between all versus not all. Okay, there's still a distinction of all, whereas Ji is instantaneously, no thinking, no processing, okay, is, ji is, is, itself is, immediately, okay? No need for all, in other words. You know, to say all would be incorrect. If you, from a purist perspective, from a, from a Prashya Paramita teaching, if you substitute ji with ji, then it's incorrect. Is it clear? Okay, so that's all we have. Well, it's not, it's just, uh, that's, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a typo or not a typo. The, the quote should be, Li Chu Qi Chen. So you, you Koreans should learn, it's a Qi, not a Chie. Okay, that's wrong to teach Chie. Okay, I would substitute this if you Koreans would like to continue to use this phrase as a guidance for your daily practices, for your son practices, Buddhist practices, you should, we should have used, should use, sui chu zuo chu, li chu ji chen. Okay? Please change it. Uh, pay attention, please. Yes, question, pink. So, uh, Ju Mountain asked, uh, maybe because Ling Ji Master was talking to people at that time, for their level, so they so he said it like that. No, no. Ji, ji includes ji. Ji includes all levels. Ji does not include the top levels. That's why. 
Okay, Chia is okay up to Lin Ji's level. But beyond Lin Ji's level is Ji. That's why Lin Ji understand is up to Chia, which is correct for his disciples. But for us Wei Yang people, okay, it's Ji, not Chia. Is it clear? Okay, questions and comments about this. So again, we appreciate the input from, the, from Koreans about this uh, Linji teaching. That's very good. Uh, questions or comments? Go ahead. Questions and comments. Don't be shy. Express your opinion. I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with you Koreans. You don't have a uh, you, you you don't have a problem, huh? None of you has a problem. This used to kill me. I used to be so upset at this, so frustrated, not upset, very frustrated. This is so Chinese. That's what I mean by Chinese. It's so Chinese. Uh, okay, let's look at the teaching. Be your own master anywhere. So far, so good, right? Be your own master anywhere. I used to read a lot of these teachings in Chinese. I started to learn Chinese and, and because I was not happy with the English translation from uh, my master's uh, uh, disciples, so I started learning, had to learn Chinese. I went to Chinese. And then after that, I went to other patriarchs uh, teachings in Chinese, okay? In my time, 25 years ago, 20 years ago, there, aren't, there weren't a lot of materials, okay, uh, in English. So I had to learn Chinese, had no choice. Mm. And, and I read a lot of Chinese Bay Sharks teachings and uh, don't remember um, reading Lin Ji's uh, teachings. Uh, but, but the problem I have what these teaching is this. Same thing as some of Master Shenhua's teaching, especially in Six Patriarch Sutra. It used to bother me so much. What bothers me is this, folks. Okay? YouTube has a question. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, there's Chinese in here. Uh, uh, the question from Tianguo. Actually, in this case, Sui Chu and Ji are a pair. In Buddha's verse, it used Ji because it doesn't, didn't have Sui Chu. It has nothing to do with Sui Chu. Li Chu Qi Chen is not Ji. Okay. Hmm. Ji includes Jie. You don't want to dilute the meaning of Ji. The original teaching from the scripture is Ji. You don't want to dilute it. All right? It doesn't matter if you have Sui Chu or not. It doesn't matter. Sui Chu is whatever you want to add to explain, to illust illustrate the, the, the concept as an example. But the true teaching is Li Chu. Ji Chen is the proper teaching. It's not Jie Chen. All right? But thank you for the input. That, that makes sense to you, but, uh, but it's, not, it's not accurate from, uh, from the... Uh, 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 it shows that mass, to me, it shows Master Lin Ji's uh, 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 limitations. Okay? Uh, let me elaborate for you a little bit and see if it make, makes sense to you. Okay, here's a, my, what bothers me uh, to no end. Uh, even some, especially some of Master Shenhua's teaching in Six Patriarch Sutra, okay, it bothered me because it's along the same line. Okay? It's so Chinese to me, okay? Because when I read the line, for example, Sui Chu, Zhou Chu, okay, in Six Patriarch Sutra, he says, 
you should be, there's a mind king, okay? There's a true concept in the Sikh Patriarch Sutra as well. And I, I said, can you guys be real, please? How do I become my own master? You tell me, be my own master, tell me how. Because it is such an important concept, right? Be your own master. That's the key. Then please elaborate for me. How do I become my own master? As a Western educated person, it kills me. Because you tell me this is so critical in the practice. Then my immediate reaction is, how? How do I become your, my own master? Tell me how do I do that? Don't just tell me you should be your own master and then leave me dang, hang, you know, hanging from, you know, be suspended somewhere in space. It doesn't bother you? This bothers the heck out of me. Make sense to you or not? It doesn't make sense to you, we can skip it and we can end it right here. Time is up. Yes, question. So Master, does that mean that when you have to sit to reach a certain level like the, the Buddha who to, to be your own master or even Bodhi, Bodhisattva have to learn from the Buddha? At some point in time you practice, you will become your own master. That's what the Buddha says. That's what Master Linji says. You can be your own master. Okay? Uh, and you put yourself in the audience of when lis who was listening to this uh, great Chan master. So you should be your own master. And many of them were at, at uh, the level that I was. And I said, uh, okay, I have to be my own master. Please tell me what to do. Okay? It may make sense to the people like your advanced disciples, but to me, it's, it doesn't make sense. It kills me. Okay? I couldn't ask for reimbursement of my, of my, uh, of my class expenses, class fees. Yes, Blue. I Phật, thưa Thầy, cái chỗ này nè. Trước đây con cũng thắc mắc như vậy đó. Thì trong cái cuốn sách mà tất về các thiền sư Trung Hoa đó, cái, 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 cái lời giảng của Tổ Diện Thọ Tịnh Độ Tông Tổ Thứ Sáu cũng có nói chỗ này. Phật bây giờ nói chủ với Phật là cái gì trước, định nghĩa cái đó cái đã. Thì có nhiều người hỏi thì mấy ngài trả lời là Phật là gì chủ là gì? Cái biết của ông đó, cái mà ổ vệ năng nó xưa nay không một Phật đó. Bởi vì cái thân tứ đại mình đất nước gió lửa nó không biết thiết pháp, không biết nghe pháp. Mà tại sao con chim kêu mình nghe, con chim cu kêu mình nghe giọt nước mưa mình nghe. Cái biết nghe đó là cái Phật là chủ của mình đó. Ai cũng có, con chim, con trùng, con kiến nó cũng có nữa. Thì cái đó là mình là chủ đó, ở đâu mình cũng sống, cái Phật tánh của mình ma vương hồi nãy thầy nói cũng có cái đó nữa. Thì bây giờ... <cười> Mình biết mình, ví dụ bây giờ mình làm sao mình mình nghĩ như nãy thầy nói người Tây Phương làm sao mình biết cái đó. Thì mấy tổ nó đã con mắt, mình biết mình có con mắt, thì làm sao mình thấy con mắt mình được. Mình biết mình có con mắt, không mắt con mắt là mình biết cái đó là của mình rồi. Nên tổ về năng mình nói là xưa nay không một vật. Mình biết mình có cái đó. Con chim kêu mình nghe máy bay bay ngang, mình nghe con chim máy bay nó bay. Mình biết mình có cái đó mà chỉ ra mình chỉ không được. Ở đâu lỗ tai mình, lỗ tai mình là, là tứ đại, là đất nước gió lửa. Nó đâu có nghe được. Thì cái biết đó là chủ, là Phật, là Phật đó. Ma Vương cũng có cái đó. Bây giờ hỏi làm sao tôi thấy? Thì mấy tổ mới giảng là biết mình có con mắt. mình Làm sao con mắt thấy con mắt được mà biết mình có con mắt? Là nó đó đó. Thì mình nhìn cái Phật tánh mình biết cũng vậy đó. Thì tùy xứ là tức là các chỗ khác. Mình làm cái gì cũng từ trong cái không ra. Đừng có ghét với thương phạm thương thánh hồi nãy đó. Là dùng cái tông phân biệt vọng tưởng lên nữa. Thì mấy ông trôi nổi hoài thôi. See if you can translate that. <laughs> um, master, I, I read in a book about um, the Chan mat Master in China and um, the Sixth Patriarch in the Pure Land uh, lineage. 
He said that, uh, like uh, the concept here is similar to whatever the six patriarch uh, said that uh, um, from the beginning here there's nothing. Uh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to translate it. That is your Buddha nature. So there's only your Buddha and then it stay in in each of you like for example the the bird the bugs the ants they all have buddha nature and then it's very difficult to explain it to a westerner because the <laughs> the patriarchs say that you just know that you have it just say that the you know that there's the eyes but then the eyes cannot see the eyes and and then so in the end you just need to not to be discriminate lập một vật khởi một pháp là sai rồi giống bữa thầy giảng như cái tia lightning strike đó khởi là một cái là sai rồi mà mình làm thinh như vậy đó mình biết hết lúc đó mình đang trong cái phật tánh của mình biết cái biết của mình đó mà khởi lên thường như ghét một cái hay là khởi một ý niệm lên là là sai rồi lập một pháp là sai rồi Mm. You see, I just we just witness uh, the inadequate translation from Vietnamese into English because the difference in levels. What he means is something else. He translates into something else, and that's why it's very dangerous when you translate. Okay, uh, uh, the translation did not capture what he meant in Vietnamese. It's from Vietnamese to English, the translation, the translator does not know what he's talking about. So the words themselves don't make sense. Okay? Uh, I just proved to you right there and that, that uh, that's why the translation is very, very important. That's why I told you, after a while, I look at the English translation, and I'm like, you missed the point. Okay, and, and what the old monk says is true, even though he doesn't articulate it very well, it's true. But uh, it's true, but it doesn't help you cultivators. My problem is not the truth, whether this statement is correct or not. My statement, my, my problem is, how do I become my master? He's not addressing, how do I become the master? My question is very specific. I know you may understand. I may, you may know what his, this monk is talking about. But for me, someone who, someone who does not understand yet, okay? How do I become my own master? Please tell me. It may make sense to you, but I only need to know how do I become my own master? Because this great monk, Chan monk here says, you, should be your own master anywhere. I tell you what the problem is. Number one, how do I become my own master for people who are not their own masters? Number one. Number two, at slow level, so far so good. Number two, if you're high level, Sui Chu is stupid. Okay? That's why the Chinese explanation of Sui Chu goes with Chie, it's okay, it's okay. But even if you can make a case for that, to me, I go back to Sui Chu right away, Chinese people, and say, Sui Chu is stupid. Lin Chi should not be talking about Sui Chu. If you are, if you are Zuo Chu, there's no need for Sui Chu. Okay, and on the other hand, if you really are, you really understand, then there's even need, no need for so true either. <laughs> this is for low level people. And that's why, that's, that's precisely my point. He's teaching this to the people who are not enlightened. And I, that's how it's 
frustrates me because it doesn't tell me how to do it. If you take, you talk to, if you say this to enlightened people, say, yeah, it makes sense to me. It's obvious. If it's so obvious, then why do you even have to say it? So clearly, it's not for enlightened people. You understand my point? If you don't like, you lose it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's all true, of course. Yeah, you, Buddha Nation, and all those, those things. Yes, that's fine. Yes, it makes sense. But I will caution you again. Lin uh, Ji, with all due respect, in my humble opinion, okay, is trying to address the teaching to people who are not enlightened. And this is what kills me about the Chinese. They're so abstract. They say, you should zo chu. Yes, yes. You know, in principle, it's true. Say chu zo chu. It's true. It is correct. For low-level people. Low-level Lin Ji. High-level Lin Ji. We slap his face and you stop talking like an idiot. Okay? But if you talk to these people, okay, you teach your own, your own people lower level, I accept it. But my problem then becomes, guys, you remember, I remember, just tell me how. Don't tell me uh, to be my own master without telling me how. It kills me. All the Chan Chinese masters say you should be your own master. I said, just tell me how, please. Don't tell me my own master, be my own master, and, and not tell me how. Huh? He said, China is very easy, just be your own master. Just please tell me how. That's my problem. And this is why now the young Chinese, they keep on quoting, the Koreans keep on quoting these things, which are true, which are very good teachings, and it's a good teaching, but if you don't tell them how they are lulled into thinking, they know what it is when they don't. So the Chinese, are the, 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 the well-read Chinese according all these scriptures, all these teachings left and right, and they don't know what it means. They don't know what it takes to be, to be your own master. They don't realize the context is this teaching is from an enlightened teacher, okay? Three quarters of the way up there to his unenlightened sankans. Without telling them what to do. See the problem? She, she, she can't quote me these things. Because this is the fallacy of teaching, the Chinese fallacy of teaching it in a way that's too abstract. Case in point, if you buy into my point that ji, the Chinese character should be ji, not jie, okay? Because that's from the Prahachana Paramita Sutra text. You should keep it. I would be the last person to change any single character from that sutra. Never. Okay? Because, why? Because the Buddha's teachings. I'm no Buddha. I would not dare change his teachings. Is that clear? It's sacrilegious. The Buddha only taught Li Chu, Qi Chen, okay? Uh, he didn't have to add Sui Chu and Zhou Chu, no, you know. He, he's, he's, he's elaborating for his low-level people, that's fine, okay? In his own temple, that's fine, okay? Uh, but later, these, uh, uh, these teachings become uh, misinterpreted especially by Chinese people who are, I hear too many of, the, of them quoting these phrases, and they look, I look at them, I take a look at them, I say, you don't know what you're talking about.
Okay. Yes, uh, now we run into overtime. Yes, GF has a question. Go ahead, go forest. Okay, forget go forest. YouTube, go ahead. Hello, I'm the full master. Yes, that's go for us. I recognize um, the voice yes, uh, from the I think, tomb. I think, um, um, be your own master, uh, which means uh, the stop thinking. That's uh, what we should do, what we, we stop thinking. Then. Okay, we get okay, okay. It's, uh, it has been an adventure, venture that we stop thinking. How do I stop thinking? He sound. He, he, he talks as if it's easy to stop thinking. Just yeah, stop thinking. Uh, Just stop in, thinking. Uh, here, Have here you stopped thinking? I mean, of all, uh, here in uh, Changchi, then uh, we follow the schedule. <laughs> that <laughs> may bring us to. <laughs> <laughs> but have you stopped thinking? Go, go ahead, YouTube. So uh, YouTube has a few guesses on how to be your own master. Okay. Uh, one of them is... Guess away. Uh, find, <laughs> uh, first guess is find a good knowing advisor. Okay. Second one is uh, be your own light. Uh, be your own light? Listen, okay. Be your own light. And the third one is listen to your heart. Listen to your heart, okay? <laughs> your heart is in love. You listen to your loving heart, yes? <laughs> uh, find a good no advisor. It's a lot harder than you think. You know any good no advisor? I don't. <laughs> and what is the, the second suggestion? Be your own light? Yeah. Be your own light. What does it have to do with your own master? Master and light are, are different things. I, I tell you what, you, before you become enlightened, you, you can emit light. You can be your own light. But it doesn't help you become your own master. Okay? Yes, YouTube comment. Keep going. So another, uh, another guess is uh, stop asking the question. You stop thinking and become your own master by stop asking questions. Stop asking questions. <laughs> so, you, you, so I can't even ask, uh, if, you know, if that's the case, I can't even ask that. Come on, Chinese people, Chinese masters, be real, please. I'm not Chinese. Tell me how I can become my own master. I can't even do that. He's probably Chinese. That's why he suggests this. <laughs> uh, yes, pink. Master, I am not Chinese, but <laughs> uh, I think uh, last time you uh, told us to be our own master by having uh, control, self-control, and okay. uh, also to be yourself. And... Um, and to not let our emotion to be basically, you know, uh, or guidance, just to be able to manage those emotions and not, you know, add okay. over those emotions. Okay, very good. You fasting, so I will spare you. <laughs> the reason I ask you is because I, I read from so many Chinese masters, including Master Shenhua, who says these things and, and, and they used to kill me because they don't, I, have, I didn't have a chance to ask them in person, please master, teach me how can I become my own master, right? That's all I ask. I'm not saying they're wrong, I'm just like to know. How do I become my, how do I become my own master? You want me to memorize it, Koreans? You should, you should ask immediately the person who taught you, how do I become my own master? Okay? That should be 
That would be my first reaction. Okay? No. My point is this, folks. What I complain about so Chinese, because it's, so, it's subject to so many misinterpretations, and give the Chinese, especially the un... The, the Chinese who do not cultivate, all they do is listen and talk and, and they don't put in the work. They give them the false impression they understand these Chinese teachers. Yes, the Chinese teachers, the teaching is correct. But if, unless you cultivate, you don't know what they really mean at all. Okay? Uh, Get it? That's, what, that's, that's my point about being too Chinese. Because the teaching is so abstract. It's, so, it's subject to so many misinterpretations. And that's what's happening to the Chinese people right now. They look at us and say, you are Westerners. You are non-Chinese people. We have all the teachings. Yeah, you have all the teachings. You don't know what the hell those teachings mean. We don't have all the teachings. But we know some of the meaning of those teachings. And once you understand some of the meaning, you can ask me the other, I will explain to you what the others mean. One Dharma door leads to 84,000 Dharma doors. You Chinese heard of that before? Yes? Okay. Never mind. Okay. We're not here to compete with the Chinese. Who cares? Okay. My point is this. It shows the level of this Linji master. He's still stuck on the lack of precision. They talk about principles, okay? But they don't tell you how to do it. Versus my Chinese master, the other Chinese master, Master Xinhua, he doesn't tell you, he doesn't talk like this, he doesn't teach like this, okay? Remember, I had to go to three nights to explain to you what this guy teaches, Lin Ji teaches in 10 sentences in Chinese, yes? Basically. Had to go three nights because they're so, they're so involved. There's a lot of, lot of stuff here, okay? Uh, and still in the end, it lacks specifics. How do I do it? It's all I ask. You want me to be uh, my old master, please teach me how. Okay, uh, if you say sui chu at anywhere, and then you should explain to me anywhere what does it mean, as well, because when I'm my own master at home is different from your own master at the temple. It lacks specifics. That's my complaint. It doesn't tell me what to do. They only talk about you know it's like I'm an idiot. I'm kindergarten, and you say, okay, eventually you will understand algebra, you understand physics, you understand chemistry, you understand, you know, PhD level things, and you talk about it to me. It's not very useful to me. Okay? Chan, this is my, this is my complaint, my fault. My, what I fault much as Lin Ji, with all due respect. It's too abstract. I'm glad we learned Wei Yang. I wasn't, I didn't start with Lin Ji. Now I look at Lin Ji and say, I'm lucky. I didn't try to spend years trying to understand how do I be my own master and get lost. Not know what, you know. If you try to figure it out yourself, you, chances are that you will fail. You will get lost. Because you have no guidelines. Whereas my Chinese master, who is certified to be a Wei Yang, lineage patriarch, what does he do? What did he do? Yes, I was complaining when I read his Six Patriarch Sutra that just tell me how do I control the mind king? How do I, how, how do I be my own master and so forth? Okay? It's not clear in the Sixth Patriarch Sutra. 
but I shelved it. Okay, what did I do? I continued executing his other instructions that were clearer. Just because I don't understand something, I just shelve it. I don't reject it. This comes from a sage. I don't. I didn't reject it. Okay. So, what? What do we people in a way Anglicans do to be our own master anywhere? I will tell you this. I dare. I challenge you, Linji practitioners, to find in Linji's teachings, in all Master Linji's teachings. The, pre the precise instruction on how to be your own master. I will tell you this. You will find out that Master Xuanhua's in our way and in his instructions are much, much better. That's my point. YouTube comment. I know I'm offending a lot of Linji uh, followers, and uh, uh, so be it. Keep on shooting at me. It's open season. YouTube, go ahead. Yeah, so LTD has a comment on how to stop thinking. Uh, Master said that you don't need to know all the answers. When you are faced with a problem and you find a solution on your own, that is how you grow. Yes. In a way, I'm lineage. Okay, he's right. It's not about understanding. It's about, I said earlier, what did I say? It's not about you say, I understand what this phrase means. It's about what you do that will help you understand what this phrase means. How do you become your own master? And in our lineage, Okay, Wei Yang lineage. The teaching from that great master Xinhua is ingenious. It's incredibly wise. It's incredibly profound. It's incredibly specific. Because I executed that, eventually I understood what it meant to be your own master by executing those instructions. Are you, do you follow me so far? You need to have specific things, no specific things that will help you get there. Right now, yes, they're describing us nirvana or, 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 uh, or what do you call it, uh, or uh, uh, the promised land, if you will. Okay? But you have to tell me how to get there. That is what all I ask. You can, all, you can talk all you want. You can make me promises all you want. But please tell me, how do I get started? Yes? That's not asking for much. For where I came from. Okay? And apparently, the Chinese, they say, oh, the mass is not willing to talk. It's okay, we wait. Are you kidding me? If they're here, if he's here today, Master Linji is today, I will ask the same thing. How do I, uh, excuse me, okay? Question. I think I know what you, you mean, but can you tell my disciples who are uh, uh, idiots how to do that? Right? What is your Linji style of doing that? To, to Master, to be your own master, to become the master of your destiny, of your environment, of your undertakings, of your world. How? And in our way, our lineage, how do we do that? Let me tell you the ingenious teaching of Master Shenhua, and I want you to remember this. It's not something I even don't hear his disciples explain when they teach. They think it's, it's, a, it's a common thing, it's a, it's a, it's a casual thing because, because the Master talks about it, therefore we don't need to repeat it. No! 
is ingenious. If you Koreans want to be your own master, anywhere you are, okay, so that what you are about is true, okay, you personify, you embody truth, purity, whatever you want to call it, okay, truth. If you want to do that, this is what you do. In Wei Yang, here's what we do. Would you like to know? Uh, time is up. You see, after three days, it's been killing me. I said, when is someone going to ask me this? Because, because you see, if you talk to the intellectuals here in this country, they tear you to pieces, okay? They ask very specific things. How do I become a master? Come on, man. Let's be real. Keep on beating around the, stop beating around the bush. Yes, YouTube has a question. Tango asks, uh, Master, could you give us one thing that we can do now to help us be our own master? Um, I'd love to, but uh, there's no more time. I spent three days already, and people have been complaining. Shall we talk about it, or you'd rather, you know, go do it? Hey, Korea, you want to stop, or you want to continue? Jewel Mountain, you want to stop, or you want to continue? Those who want to stop, raise your hands. <laughs> I'm getting back at them. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to continue? Not your head, you want to continue. <laughs> yes, they want, they want to continue. Uh, but I'm so thirsty. Let's see. No more tea. Oh, God. <laughs> it's getting late. Okay, I'll be a good guy today. Okay. We are lineage. It's about fundamentals. The Master Shenhua's teaching is so beautiful, so ingenious. Hey, boy. <laughs> what does he do? He says, if you follow the six principles, you'll be your own master. That's how beautiful it is. The reason I doubted him, I questioned him in the sixth page chart because I didn't, did not understand the six principles when I read it. But, but even though I didn't understand the six page chart sutra, it came back to the fundamentals. What are the six principles? And you start practicing them, then you naturally bring you there. That's why Master Shenhua's teaching is, to me, I could not find anyone that beautiful, that ingenious. Just hang on to the six principles, folks. It's our Wei Yang lineage. Okay? That's our fundamentals. From there, you can branch out to anything you like. Okay? That's the genius behind it. It's not the five precepts. It's the six principles, by the way. If those of you who say it's the same as the five precepts, no, it's not. It's far better than the five precepts. You should be proud of that. That's what we practice. That's our core. Is that clear? It's our core. If you don't deviate from that, you hang in there, you will get what, what, what Lin Ji is talking about.
questions, comments. And I have yet, by the way, to find a better instruction on how to get to your own, be your own master than the six principles so far. Yes, orange. Master, can you tell us what the six principles are? Uh, it's not enough time. Okay, they should be, we should have, we, you, you folks should collect my instruction on the six principles. I explained them about five, six times at various points. Uh, and they all need to be combined because I rarely repeat myself about those instructions. I add more and more and more depending on your level. Okay? Uh, I still can explain, pound it to me, to you uh, uh, for, for quite a while, but, but, uh, but uh, the six principles are profound, very profound. It's ingenious. Okay, so uh, I don't know if we can collect those, uh, those uh, videos, can we do a search on them or something? Because uh, uh, the one thing uh, is that I, I get bored. I don't want to repeat the same thing over and over, okay? All right, we, we do have, I think Xian Jie has, has some, some some keywords in the searches for those videos. You, you might be able to find quite a few, at least three or four. As far as I remember, Master Xianjie did a, a index on the titles of those videos, the contents of those videos, okay? You should get them, okay? And, and, uh, and, uh, uh, The six principles, okay? Share the link, please, okay? Uh, should, that should be translated into Korean, okay? That's very important. It's more, and you know, there's more and more and more, depending on your level. It's beautiful, okay? I mean, it, it's just ingenious. That, that shows how high of a level my, master, my late Chinese master is compared to, for example, Lin Zi. Okay. And for some reason, I don't understand why his disciples didn't delve more into those teachings or those fundamentals when they teach. Uh, and when I explain them, uh, it's not as profound as Master Shenhua meant. Okay, so at low level, it means certain level. At high level, it means uh, 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 a different kind of depth. And profundity is fascinating. Okay. Hmm. All right, we stop here today. Thank you all. Uh, and uh, uh, this concludes our explanation of this uh, famous Korean uh, quotation, uh, quote. Uh, and um, I hope that uh, we contribute, we shed a little bit, uh, help shed a little bit of light on this important Son teaching to the Koreans. And my conclusion is, Koreans, uh, don't practice this phrase. <laughs> Drop it, it's nonsense. Okay? It doesn't mean anything to you, it's not gonna help you. Instead, practice the six principles. Okay? And that will bring you very, very far. Yeah. Okay? And maybe someday you will surpass Lin Ji as well. <laughs> With those foundations. 
All right, sorry, no comment, time is up. Enough is enough. Thank you all. Okay.